OK, so in this video, we've got two diagrams. They both show a light rod in equilibrium under the action of coplanar forces in newtons. And we need to find the values of the lettered forces. OK, so we need to find here the A, the B, the C, and the D. OK, so what we're going to do then is we are going to take moments about particular points and that will enable us to work out those values, OK? So, if I take moments about, let's say, that point there, OK? So if I call that point P, then if I take moments about P, then I'm going to need them to be 0 in order for the rod to be in equilibrium, OK? Now, also notice that, based on the uh, example that we just looked at in the previous video, these um, rods are light, and so they don't have, uh, they've got negligible mass, okay? So we don't have mass acting through their centre of mass, okay? Through the centre of the rod. So just to be aware of that. So I'm going to take moments about P. So what I've got is this force here, 10 newtons, uh, which is going to be going around clockwise. So I'm going to have minus 10 times by 8 plus 3, so 11. And then I've got A going around that way, which is anti-clockwise, and so that's positive. So plus A times its distance away from P, so 3, and that's got to be 0. OK, so A is going to have to be, well, 10 lots of 11 is 110 uh, over 3. OK, so A is going to have to be 110 over 3. Now, from that point, I could then take moments about another point to find B. OK, that's perfectly reasonable. Or I can now use, because I've got only one force left, I can use the fact that the resultant force has got to be 0. So if I resolve, horizontal, uh, resolve vertically, taking upwards as positive, then I've got the B, I've got the 10, they're working in the positive direction, and I've got the 110 over 3 working against me, the A. Resultant force has got to be 0, so B would have to be 110 over 3, take away the 10. So that's 80 over 3. Now, I want to confirm to you that if I'd taken moments about another point, I would have got the same value. OK, so if I took moments, let's say, about this point here, let's call that Q. So if I take moments about Q, I'm going to have to get 0. So I've got the 10 newtons, which is going around that way. OK, so that's clockwise, so it's negative. So minus 10 times by the distance away, so 8. And then I've got this B that's going around that way. OK, which is uh, anti-clockwise. So plus B times the distance away from Q, so 3. And that's got to be equal to 0. So B has got to be 10 lots of 8 divided by 3, which is the 80 over 3. So you can see that you could have done this in either way, and you would still get the same answer. You could also take moments about this point, call that point R. For example, take moments about that, and you'll find that you get the same value again. OK, so the choice of where you take moments from um, can sometimes be up to you. OK, so there is a little bit of uh, leeway here that you can utilise. OK, so let's have a look at B then. Right, so let's call um, this point P down here. Let's call that P. And let's take moments about P. OK, so what have I got? I've got the 20 Newton force, which is going to go around that way, which is clockwise. OK, so I've got minus 20 times its distance away, 3. I've got the 50 Newtons going around that way. OK, so that's anti-clockwise, and so that's positive. So plus 
50 times its distance away from P, which is 3 plus the 5. Make sure you don't just put the 5 down. That'd be a silly error. 3 plus 5, so 8. And then I've got D, which is going that way round, okay, which is uh, clockwise. So take away D times its distance away from P, so 7 plus 5 plus 3, so that's 15. And that's got to be equal to 0. Okay, so if I add the 15D to both sides, so I've got 15D will be equal to, well, I've got the 50 times 8, uh, take away 20 lots of 3, so that's 340. So 340 divided by 15 is 68 over 3. So that's D. Okay, right, so then I need to work out C. So, once again, I could take moments about another point, or I could just use the fact that the resultant is going to be zero. So if I resolve uh, vertically, taking upwards as positive, then I've got C, uh, take 20, plus 50, take away 68 over 3. It's got to be zero. So we've got 68 over 3, take away the 50, plus the 20, gets me minus 22 over 3. Okay, so actually that must mean that in order to be in equilibrium, C is actually a force that is pointing the other way. Okay, so in our force diagram, C would have to be pointing the other way, really, at 22 over 3, in order for the rigid body to be in equilibrium.